Welcome to my podcast, Over 40 and Fabulous, the show that helps you live your best life no matter your age. I'm Robin Thomas, lifestyle and wellness expert and a community leader in holistic health. I'm the founder of Living Well Connections, a healthy living community that supports, educates, and empowers us all to make healthy decisions toward a more balanced and fulfilling life. I have a background in medical research, and I love exploring the interplay of our physical, mental, and spiritual selves. This weekly show is your haven for real talk, science-based solutions, and inspiration from women who get Hello, fabulous friends. Welcome to episode three of Over 40 and Fabulous. I'm so glad you're here. Last week, we explored ways to become happier and more positive by training our brain. Because even as we age, it is possible to train your brain to become happier and more positive due to our brain's natural ability to respond to habitual behaviors. Now, today we have a special guest. Gail Carnan Jones is a transition and worthiness coach author, and teacher who has been leading clients through transformation for more than 20 years. Gail trained with world-renowned neuroscientists in guiding clients to rewire the brain for new levels of personal and professional success. She's the author of two books, Cancer as a Love Story, Developing the Mindset for Living, and To Hell and Back, Healing Your Way Through Transition, She's also an executive contributor for Brains Magazine, and her most recent article is titled The Wisdom of Age. Welcome, Gail. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Robin, I'm so excited to be here, especially talking about the wisdom of age. Uh, It has such negative connotations to aging. And it's interesting, you know, you said I've been a coach for, you know, over 20 years, and I've coached people from ages 18 to 75 and up. And it's really significant what's happening with second half of life in coaching and what I'm seeing with people and in the world today. Um, there's so much to contribute second half of life. It's a, it's a new beginning. It's not an ending. I like that. That thrills me because I really true, be, truly believe that when I turned 40, um, and, I, and I'm now much older than that, <laughs> but when I turned 40, I, I felt like life was over and, uh, and there was lots of challenges happening in my life, but I realized with just in a few years that, Hey, that's, that's not right. Life is just beginning. Right. It's really been, um, you know, getting older. Uh, it, there's definitely a wisdom to it. Like the name of your article. Absolutely. And there are certain things that change, like our requirements of what we want second half of life are often very different than first half of life. Uh, One thing I find personally is I'm a very motivated person like you, but I don't have the drive that I had in younger years. It's my, my choices and the way I live is inner driven versus externally driven, like things like material success, uh, status, those things don't matter as much to me as they did in earlier years. But the wisdom that comes from that inner time is so profound that it changes your life and at deep levels, it changes your relationships. And, you know, one of the things I'd like to just say at the beginning here is that I believe my messages are on love and it intensifies wanting to live from love second half of life. And just to give you this quote, this was from a priest that was on Oprah at one time. And he said the two most frequently asked questions at end of life are, am I loved and did I love well? So the emphasis on second half of life to me is really deepening that sense of love, deepening your relationships and deepening what you love to do, which is why, you know, you and I talked earlier about me creating the program, Born to be Alive, um, realizing your heart desire. That born to be alive and realizing your heart desire really accelerates second half of life. So we're not declining. We're actually elevating at, at our true essence. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. You were telling me a little bit earlier about um, people we may know about who started some of their greatest work older in life. 
Yes. Well, you know, Louise Hay of Hay House Publishing, very well known, didn't start Hay House Publishing till she was 60 years old. And in her 70s and 80s, she was winning awards for her, her dance and her art. So that's another story. Ray Kroc, who founded McDonald's franchise, the first franchise, was 51 when he started that. Judy Dench was 61 when she was really recognized as an actor in the bon James Bond series, even though she was known in her 50s. And so these are late bloomers that really excelled well, and they're very inspirational to us. But I want to go back to a couple of statistics that are really important. Mm -hmm. uh, most people now understand midlife to be ages 35 to 75 to about 75. And um, Chip Conley wrote a great book called um, Loving Midlife that's about that. And what's really significant to understand is that what happens to it, I just want to look this quote up really quickly because it's really important because this number, I want to get it accurate. It's yeah. estimated that the number of people who are working, who will be working full time at age 75 is one third of the population as opposed to 5% years ago. So that is really a significant number. So the old concept of retirement is going away. And there's other people in the world now calling it work as option. Like you want to have the option to retire if you want, but a lot of people are opting to work. Um, and there's some mm -hmm. that have to work. But to think that 65 is the deadline or 66 or even 70, it's not. One third, that's a an amazing statistic. And then there's another statistic that comes from, I just want to pronounce her name right, Dr. Becky Le Levy of Yale School of Public Health, whose research explores the psychosocial factors that influence older individuals. And this is key. When people shift their mindset from a negative belief about aging to a positive, they extend their life by seven and a half years. That's so that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. They're extending their life. And as I would see that they're filling their life with much greater joy. So right. a, a much happier life too. Right. And what we know now from research, the science research, which I know you love, Robin, is that one of the ways we change, shift from negative to positive is to have dip, deeper, richer connections. And we all have to focus right now on second half of life or midlife, what you call it, on building a community, building a tribe. But building a tribe that other people that are going through the aging process, so you have like-minded others. But I also wanted to share another statistic that I just, just remembered um, from the book Aging Well by Dr. George Villian. I read it many, many years ago. And in that book, he interviewed... Um, he was a Harvard psychiatrist. He interviewed students ages 18 to elder years. He did a long, long, long study. And he was trying to determine what gives somebody a quality second half of life. And was it the kid that went to Harvard on the, you know, the silver spoon? Was it, you know, and, and he compared it to the person who grew up in the Bronx. And one of the leading um, factors to having a quality second half of life is if you had a sense of community. So in that community could be, as you get older and people in your circle die, that you might your community might now include younger people. Your, your neighbor might be a young person just starting out. So deepen your circle with people that are going through what you're going through at your age, but also expand your circle with finding people that replace in a different way the people who we've lost. I think expanding our community and in true ways, um, in authentic ways is, is so very important. You made me think of my mother who just had her 98th birthday. Wow. And she has gone through, and when, you're, when you've lived 98 years, you've gone through times of, of uh, struggle. You've, ha you've gone through times of losing friends um, for one way or the other, but she's always been a doer and going into circles of people with that are looking at topics she's interested in right? and making friends that way of all ages. So right. even at 98, I know she's lost a lot of her college friends. She's lost a lot of, um, you know, the, the friends from her youth, but she still has loads of friends. That's awesome. That's a and, and they share, you know, they just share great information and they share uh, talents and 
right. it's a wonderful thing to see. Right. I want to share a couple other statistics about the workplace for the um, those of us that are over 35. <laughs> um, that's really important. Um, this is from an article. I actually cited it in my article in Brains Magazine that you referred to, but this comes from Columbia University's public health page site. So these are the top 10 advantages of hiring quote unquote older workers. Mm -hmm. They are number one, they are skilled and experienced. Two, they stay in jobs longer and take fewer days off. Three, they have a strong work ethic. Four, they retain a knowledge and networks, which we've talked about. Five, the perceived technology gap, which does exist, can be overcome. Six, older workers prove that the best teams are multi-generational. Seven, older workers play a critical role in training the next generation. Eight, they provide customers with consistency and personal attention. Nine, older workers attract more business. And 10, older workers are part of the business brand. So I thought that was very exciting to hear. And I know being one of those older workers myself and having young adults that are very tech savvy, 10 times more tech savvy than I am, sometimes I had felt inadequate compared to their technolo technology knowledge. Like we didn't grow up with computers and you know it wasn't second nature to us. But I think it's really important when we work with younger people, and I've mentored a lot of them in different ways, both as a coach, but in, in environments where I've been brought in as a consultant, I value that they're much quicker and faster at some of the technology. Like I really value them that they can do that much faster. But a lot of younger people haven't been through cur life curveballs that give us a depth of wisdom to withstand a lot of storms. Mm -hmm. I've been through breast cancer. I've been through death of both parents. I've been through divorce. A lot of us have been through a lot of things by this point in life. You've been through a lot of caregiving um, challenges. That kind of wisdom isn't what you go to school. You don't get it in school. You don't get it with degrees. You don't get it at jobs. So I love when I work with younger people that I can value them, but also share a little bit of wisdom that they can't possibly have at their age. They haven't been jolted enough. They haven't had to suck it up. They haven't had to move through some really challenging times. I mean, I know a lot of people have had difficult childhoods. I mean, I coach a lot of those people, but to really have had a life curveball that alters you and to have to reinvent yourself from that, like I did mm -hmm. from breast cancer and you've had to through caregiving, um, brings a depth I call it a spiritual wisdom that is more important than just having technical skills. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. In just a little bit, Gail will be sharing more wisdom of how we can truly live our best lives at any age and in any circumstance. Hello, fantastic friends. This is Robin Thomas. And I'm interrupting this episode to share a wonderful guide I've written to help myself and others get started with any health transformation called Five Ways to Get Started with Healthy Habits Without Getting Overwhelmed. This free guide leads you through five small steps that will allow you to ease into healthy habits until they become a natural part of your life. It's wonderful if you're just not quite sure how to get started. As you feel better, you'll become comfortable with your healthy habits and begin an upward spiral momentum of wellness. As a bonus, you'll be invited to join my Healthy Living community on Facebook, Living Well Connections, where you will find more information and heart-centered support for living your best life. To get this helpful guide, go to robinthomas.biz forward slash community dash support and I'll put it in the show notes too. Drop in your email and it'll arrive straight in your inbox. Now, let's get back to the podcast. Welcome back to our podcast with Coach Gail Jones. One of the things I really love about you, Gail, is, is how you bring love into the picture all the time. Tell us more about your passion about bringing love into the picture of our lives, especially in the second half of our life. 
Well, like I said earlier, you know, that one of the key things that end of life questions is, did I love well and am I loved? But I think our job at second half of life is to really deepen our love for ourselves so we can extend it into the world in service. When we do our healing journeys and we become, you know, we practice self-love and all those things we talk about, we don't just do it for ourselves. It's it's great to have a greater sense of wholeness because you've done that work. And, you know, I know a lot of the people I work with and myself have done a lot of inner work, but we didn't do it just for ourselves. We did it to serve, you know, when you, so I want to bring it to um, Dr. David Hawkins, who wrote the book Power Versus Now that a lot of people know about, but um, it was very popular years ago. But he says that there are very a lot of stages of consciousness, zero to 1,000. Most people are at 250 or below, and it could even be higher through the pandemic, But which is fear, anger, worry, doubt. 500 is love consciousness when you reach a state of love consciousness and it can be tested through muscle testing and many other ways he's scientifically proven when he can see somebody at 500 one person at 500 of love consciousness can impact 750,000 people so that's really significant so i love teaching groups and even you and i together we're raising the vibe because we're having this conversation versus one one of us just talking, right? So mm-hmm. in groups, my goal has always been to try to bring the group up to 500. 500 love consciousness. So you can feel that energy too. You can feel that energy. I, I can feel that. When I've gone to any of your workshops, I feel that rise. Oh, thank you, Robin. I do. Yeah, and I think that... Um, the world also, another thing, very important thing to understand in the world right now is we're shifting energetically in the world from a material mind-based world, uh, which was the old world before the pandemic through all the transformations happening in the world to a more spirit mind world. And in the spirit mind world, it's, it's, a, it's a different discipline than doing and achieving and making things happen. It's living from our true essence. And our true essence doesn't get attached to a lot of the ego um, demands. So for example, you know, when you're in the material mind world, you're on a seesaw, things are good, things are bad. When you're in a, when you're living from more spiritual love-based consciousness, you, you challenge yourself to go back to the middle of the seesaw to, to get calm inside before you react. And when you can train yourself to get calm inside before you react, to touch base with your inner essence, you will be love. You'll be love in you'll be love in relationships because you're not coming at a reactionary state. And I think that's the most powerful work we can be doing right now is centering within in the love we are. And you know, earlier life years, you know, I look at my 20s and 30s, and I'm sure you too, Robin, I was raising children and then then I took elder care of both parents. So I didn't have the time or the the uh, motivation to do all that centering within. And now it's part of my day. It's like, it's like miss, if I miss meditation, it's like missing a meal. Um, It's part of how I want to be with people. I want to come to them grounded. I want to come to them present. And when I'm not, and I'm triggered, which you have witnessed um, with some of the challenges I had this week with some construction around me, um, I, I waited till I got centered to even do this interview. Like it's learning to like make that a priority so that you come to situations with love. I That's wonderful. And I have experienced that too. Um, I, I have a son who is triggered very easily, but I have learned to bring myself, the more, the quicker I can bring myself to that state of calm, the better the whole entire relationship works right but the other thing is it's taken practice so this is not something you just decide to do and poof that day you're great at it right um this is something that you absolutely it is definitely it's just a daily practice and the meditation is going to help that but even just the practice in the in the situation right be kind to yourself if it's not if you're not feel if you're not feeling calm immediately Right. But you will. And it gets, e- it actually gets easier. Right. As but time I would goes say, on as you continue mm-hmm. to practice. 
Yes. And it is practice and it is a discipline. So here's a fun exercise to practice in the world um, because we all learn pretty much how to be giving it more to ourselves. So when you enter a situation and a lot of us have had hardwired to do this just from protective, we're not, we're not, we don't judge ourselves with something wrong, but a lot of us go into a situation either judging or critical, Mm -hmm. right? We're just, it's a, it's a self-protective thing, right? And you could say, oh, go in open-hearted. Well, it's easier said than done a lot, right? So if you can decide, and I know even in just training somebody new recently um, in a in a consulting situation, and there was a lot of resistance, you know, for me coming in and doing the consulting. And instead of going in with judgment or criticism of this person, understanding that this person was a little threatened, even though I was there to help, but... I, I made it my mantra to go in with love and acceptance, love and acceptance. And when I went in with love and acceptance, this person softened. It was, it wasn't, I didn't articulate it. I just claimed it within like, I'm going to let any of my judgment and any of my criticism go to the back seat, and I'm going to come in with love and acceptance. And so going back to the second part of life, the first part of life, we're doing a lot of doing, caretaking, raising kids, managing parents. Second half of life, we have more time to do this conscious work of really approaching things with love and acceptance. And that changes not only you, your inner circle, but it changes the world. And the world needs that so much right now. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for talking with me today. I just love it. Um, you bring such value to me every day and you bring so much value to others i would love for you to share a little bit about what you have you have workshops you offer mm -hmm. um, and how we can best reach you i mean what is the best way to get to be able to talk to coach gail jones okay you can email me at gail jones at claim your um i'm also on instagram and facebook at coach gail jones I'm on LinkedIn at Gail Curran and Jones. Um, so I mostly do one-on-one -on -one coaching pack packages, um, six months and um, four months and six months, but I have a new program that's going to be ongoing. You can sign up as you go along called Born to be Alive, which talked about earlier. Yes. Uh, Born to be Alive, um, uh, Living Your Heart Desire, Energizing oh, the Heart Desire. And Born to be Alive, again, is coming. Like, I know a lot of clients I've worked with over 23 years. It's We've cleared a lot of the limiting beliefs. We, we've done that basic worthiness platform that, you know, yeah. I'm known for. Uh, that's my proprietary, proprietary uh, program called the Worthy Code, which if you haven't done the worthiness piece, that's really essential. But Born to be Alive is really coming into the new world in your essence. And it's... It's a four month program, but I can't continually offer it. Right. Right. That's wonderful. Well, we'll put information about that in the show notes. Okay. And people will be able to, to um, learn more there and click on, and we'll also put all your contact information in there so they can reach out. Thank you. Yes. And I just love being on your show because you've always, from the day I met you, you are a heart centered person and you have such, such joy and such appreciation for people and also, what I also love about you and your work is it's science-based. Yes. And that's really significant because there's so much information out there about rewiring and doing things new. And But, you know, the work I do is evidence-based. And same with you. And I think that's really important. The world is coming to, I, I love it, the science is being lifted and the energy and the heart-centered and I, I really believe that we support each other. Yes. Yes, we do. Thank you so much for joining me at my Over 40 and Fabulous podcast. Please let me know if you have any questions about this episode. I will publish new episodes at noon Eastern on Saturdays so you can listen and watch at your convenience. If this podcast has been helpful for you, Please share it on your favorite social media platform or share directly with your fantastic friends. Bye for now, and I'll see you in the next episode.